Bloomberg Intelligence has been crunching the numbers and saying that Hong Kong investment bankers could face further job cuts as the slowdown in China deals persists and employers look to trim highly compensated staff. Let's bring in our senior banking and fintech analyst Francis Chen. Also want to bring in our senior diversified financials analyst Sharni Wong on the IPO outlook. Francis, I'll start with you. You've been sure. looking at this very closely. Are we, where are we in terms of this sort of job cycle now? Um, uh, this uh, has been happening for about 18 months and uh, over the past year we tried to uh, search and as many news articles as we can collect and we find out investment banking uh, divisions could be the, uh, the area of the heaviest casualties. And, uh, How we, many have you been looking at? 200 now? investment bankers wow. or more of them uh, have been cut uh, from their Hong Kong offices. I'm not talking about other offices in Asia. For instance, uh, many uh, investment banks are also cutting positions uh, in mainland China and other parts of Asia. But Hong Kong and China could be uh, among the heaviest casualty uh, we, we see from the global investment banks. Right. Uh, can, can it continue? Before I bring uh, Sharni, sure. can, can, can this trend continue? You mentioned we're 18 months into this process. Yeah, uh, that, that's a very good question. And later on, we can really bring in Shani to tell us about the IPO prospects in yeah. Hong Kong. Well, yeah. and, and we all know about the news has been plunged to a uh, multi-year low in the first quarter in terms mm. of the, the uh, volume IPO uh, uh, amount. Uh, and, and we do see some green shoots. Uh, we do have some uh, regulatory good news. Uh, th those would be uh, what we are depending on. But in terms of uh, the, the number of bankers still in Hong Kong, when I glance at the news uh, I, I search for, uh, many of the uh, global investment banks are saying oh, they have been planning to trim maybe uh, 10 to 15 percent of their staff in, in Asia. So what we have seen could be only 10 to 15 or only 20 percent of their total number of staff. So if things turn south further, we don't know there will be more to come or not. Um, is the IPO pipeline, Shardy, looking any better this year? I mean, we had some, it's a busy week in Hong Kong, at least this week. Yes, yeah, so for the onshore pipeline, definitely not, because the regulators have clamped down on that. And, um, you know, if we think back, back to uh, 2003, the last time they did the clamp down, that lasted well over a year. So it's likely that the onshore pipeline, it won't rebound until next year. Having said that, for Hong Kong, Hong Kong should be um, better if there is a rebound. So market sentiment, nobody really knows when exactly. But uh, we think that um, given that there is still a very strong pipeline of deals coming to Hong Kong, um, it, it could rebound uh, much earlier than in China. Uh, how much do we know about the pipeline at this point? How much visibility do we have over the pipeline? We actually have quite a lot of visibility. So actually, there's a lot of Chinese companies that are applying to the regulator to list overseas. So there's been over um, 230 of them since last year when, when the CSRC started accepting applications. And um, there's about 100 left in the pipeline. And of those, about 75 percent, so, so three quarters, want to list in Hong Kong. So that's definitely in the pipeline. And we're seeing, uh, you know, even on Friday, right, the, the CSRC came up with a statement, um, you know, saying that they definitely support IPOs in Hong Kong. Um, so I, I think overall on the regulatory front, definitely, it's going to be uh, very supportive. Um, what, are, what do you make of those regulations from the CSRC about, you know, they want to rid these zombie companies. There's all these capital market sort of measures now. Now, are we likely to see a wave of delistings onshore on the back of this? Yes. Or is those views are overblown? Yeah, I think they do want to increase the quality of the listings. So that's been definitely um, something that has um, been a concern especially a lot of the smaller companies. So we, we've also seen some, some of the brokers that I cover, you know, they do get fined for uh, supporting these listings. And now that they act as gatekeepers, you know, so, so they do have this responsibility. So I think over the long term, it's great. Uh, but in the near term, there could be, you know, a lot less IPOs and also, you know, potential delistings. Right. And Francis, as a business, right, they look at this sure. as cost, right? Does it, is, it a, is it a curse that Hong Kong bankers just tend to get paid, generally speaking, higher compensation-wise than their peers around the region. And they look at this cost, and there's really no business so far well, to um, justify the cost. Well, I ha have to uh, highlight that uh, uh, I have to base on some kind of surveys uh, okay. from, from headhunters mm. or recruiting firms as a basis of the online analysis. Mm. But uh, when we talk to uh, different uh, industry people, including the headhunters, uh, what they're seeing is uh, uh, the, the pay gap between the Hong Kong and Singaporean bankers have been narrowing really fast mm. over the past year or so. 
or maybe more so than what we are seeing in the survey results which I put forth in my report. Mm. So uh, it's definitely still, still getting more pay in Hong Kong, but the gap may not be as wide as uh, what the survey I use suggests. Yep. Okay, team, thank you so much. Yeah.